everyone, this is Gary. I'm off for the next few days to hopefully see the solar eclipse, which is going to be passing over the United States, weather permitting. And while I'm away, I've lined up some Encore episodes that, statistically speaking, most of you haven't heard before. I'll be back in just a few days with fresh new episodes for you to enjoy. Songkran is the traditional festival celebrated in Thailand that marks the start of the Thai New Year. It's also known as the Water Festival as it involves splashing water on one another as a symbolic gesture of cleansing and washing away the sins and bad luck of the previous year. However, it has since evolved into something much more than a religious observance. It has become the world's biggest water fight. Learn more about Songkran, the Thai New Year celebration, on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by ButcherBox. If you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you know I like to share some of the creations I've made with my ButcherBox shipments. Today, I want to tell you about my latest creation, meat muffins. I take a package of ButcherBox ground beef and mix it with shredded cheese. I then put it in a cupcake tin, filling it about three quarters of the way full. And then on top, I'll pour a scrambled egg mix. I put it in my air fryer for about 13 minutes at 390 degrees, and the result is ground beef muffins. Quick and easy to make, and you can put them in the fridge for later. And if you'd like to try this recipe out yourself, you are in luck. Because today, ButcherBox is giving my listeners free ground beef for the life of your membership, plus an additional $20 off your first order. Use my link, butcherbox.com slash everywhere, and use code everywhere to get free ground beef for life, plus $20 off your first box. That's butcherbox.com slash everywhere, Code everywhere. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We're already so far into 2024 that most people have already forgotten about their New Year's resolutions. But that doesn't mean the things you wanted to change have necessarily gone away. Most of us don't need to overhaul our lives completely. Most of us simply need to recognize and focus on our strengths. It isn't necessary to make extreme resolutions. You just need somebody to help you recognize what you're doing right so you can work on what needs improvement. BetterHelp is all about making professional counseling accessible, convenient, and affordable. With BetterHelp, you can connect with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home via online video sessions, chat, or phone calls. No matter where you are or what you're going through, BetterHelp is there for you. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Begin identifying your strengths so you can work on the rest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash everywhere today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash everywhere. I will often toss a personal anecdote into episodes, but for this episode, I want to start with one. In 2010, I was in Bangkok on the first day of Songkran. I walked out of my hotel in the morning to walk over to a convenience store one block away. I knew it was Songkran, but I had no idea what that really meant. As I was walking down the street, a woman who I had never seen before in my life walked up to me, pulled the collar of my shirt out, and then proceeded to dump a bucket of water down my shirt and said in English, Happy New Year. I found out in my first steps out the door just what Songkran was about. Getting water dumped down my shirt was the first of many wet Songkran experiences I had over the next several days. So, what exactly is Songkran, and what does it have to do with dumping water on strangers? The Thai New Year celebration actually has ancient roots. Mainland Southeast Asia has often been referred to as Indochina. It's a term that isn't used as much anymore, but it reflects the fact that India and China have heavily influenced the region. However, all of the countries in the region weren't influenced by India and China equally. Countries like Vietnam were more influenced by China, mainly due to geography. Countries like Burma and Thailand were more influenced by India. The traditional New Year's Day in India was calculated when the sun entered the constellation of Aries. Centuries ago, this occurred right around the spring equinox, so determining the new year by calculating the position of the sun against the constellations made sense. 
Over time, however, the precession of the Earth resulted in the Sun entering the constellation Aries weeks after the equinox. They stuck with the movement of the Sun as the definition of the new year, not the equinox. The name of the Sun's entrance into the constellation Aries in Sanskrit is Mesa Sankrati, which is the origin of the word Songkran. As Hinduism spread eastward into Southeast Asia, the tradition of determining the new year came with it. Today, almost every Buddhist and Hindu country in South and Southeast Asia has some celebration around the same time. In Thailand, it's Songkran. In Myanmar, it's Thing Yan. In Cambodia, it's Chul Chanam Thamai. And in Laos, it's Pai Mai. Some of you might be wondering, but Gary, Southeast Asia isn't Hindu, it's Buddhist. To which I would reply, you are correct, but the entire region used to be profoundly Hindu. Angkor in Cambodia, the Maesong Sanctuary in Vietnam, and Prambanan in Indonesia were all ancient Hindu temples. The last vestiges of Hinduism in the region are on the island of Bali. Buddhism has existed in the region almost since the religion began, but it was only in the last thousand years or so that Theravada Buddhism became dominant in places such as Burma and Thailand. The Buddhists kept the practice of celebrating New Year when the sun entered the constellation of Aries. While Buddhists kept the date, they added more traditions to the New Year celebrations. In particular, for the purpose of this episode, they used the New Year as an opportunity to clean temples as well as the statues of the Buddha. In particular, they used water to clean the statues, as water is a way to wash off the old year. Temples and statues aren't the only things cleaned during Songkran. It's an excuse to clean homes, offices, and schools as well. And it's also the time of year when people will travel to be reunited with their families. People will visit temples, make offerings of food, as well as give food to monks. Different regions in Thailand will have their own particular tradition surrounding Songkran. In the east, pagodas or stupas made out of sand will be constructed. These can be enormous structures that are only temporary. In other places, they will have colorful parades, and in still other regions, the practice of releasing fish and birds into the wild takes place. Songkran became so popular in Thailand that the government officially expanded Songkran to three days, setting the dates from April 12th to the 14th in most years. However, the starting and ending dates can vary by a day. The celebrations which are held around South and Southeast Asia all occur on April 13th or 14th, depending on the country. Many of the celebrations, especially those in Southeast Asia, are very similar to the traditions found in Thailand. However, none of what I have mentioned so far can explain why someone would walk up to a stranger and pour a bucket of water down their shirt. All of the things I've mentioned so far are traditions that are not very visible. If you happen to be in Thailand during Songkran, you will definitely know that something is happening, but it isn't for any of the reasons I've just said. In addition to washing statues with water, it's considered good luck to sprinkle water on someone's head. This tradition has somehow morphed and escalated into the entire country becoming a three-day giant water fight. A massive aquatic battle of everyone versus everyone. No one is safe, and there are no excuses. The weapons in this water fight include everything from buckets and hoses to super soakers. When I walked down the street during Songkran, I became an unwitting combatant in a water war that I didn't know was taking place. If you're driving down the street on a motorbike, someone will probably hit you with water, even though they probably shouldn't, more on that in a bit. There are people set up on some streets who just try to hit passers-by with water by whatever means possible. It doesn't matter if you have electronics on you that might be damaged. If you want to protect them, do not carry them out in public during Songkran. When I was there in Songkran in 2010, I went to participate in one of the biggest Songkran events on Koh San Road. Koh San Road in Bangkok is normally a shady place where backpackers stay, and I usually did my best to avoid it. During Songkran, almost all the businesses on Koh San Road shut down, as it has turned into the biggest street party in the city. Everyone has some sort of squirt gun. I brought my camera with me to photograph it, but nobody cared that I was carrying a sensitive piece of electronics. I had to jerry-rig water protection for my camera by putting it in a plastic bag and then attaching the opening of the bag around my lens hood. Thousands of people moved up and down the street, getting hit with water from every direction, including people with hoses from the sidelines. In addition to the water, 
Many people will also create a type of paste out of water and talcum powder and smear that on people as well. While Koh San Road was the epicenter for this in Bangkok, this was happening all over the country. When I was there in 2010, it was in the middle of a massive political event known as the Red Shirt Protests. Hundreds of thousands of people had descended on Bangkok to protest the government. Before everything died down in May, dozens of people would be dead and thousands injured in political violence. However, despite what was happening, both sides seemed to have come to an effective ceasefire during Songkran. Driving around the city, I saw impromptu musical performances on street corners, as well as the ever-present water guns. The same scene was taking place in cities all around the country. I should note that there is a dark side to Songkran as well. You probably wouldn't be surprised to hear that traffic fatalities usually double during Songkran each year. 70-80% to 80 of those fatalities happen on motorbikes. Thailand is a very popular tourist destination. However, during Songkran, it becomes extra busy as people come to take part in the festivities. I can't say I blame them. I wasn't in Thailand for Songkran, but being there for it was a unique experience and one that I'll never forget. If you're the sort of person that doesn't like having water dumped on your head by strangers, and I can totally understand if that's the case, then by all means, avoid Thailand during Songkran. However, for those of you who are in Thailand or are celebrating the New Year's festivities in any of the neighboring countries, just let me say a hearty Sawat Di Pai Mai. The executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is Charles Daniel. The associate producers are Benji Long and Cameron Kiever. I want to give a big shout out to everyone who supports the show over on Patreon, including the show's producers. Your support helps me put out a show every single day. And also, Patreon is currently the only place where Everything Everywhere daily merchandise is available to the top tier of supporters. If you'd like to talk to other listeners of the show and members of the Completionist Club, you can join the Everything Everywhere daily Facebook group or Discord server. Links to everything are in the show notes.